Well, what's poppin' and welcome back to another episode of Fletcher the Fisherman. Every single fisherman knows that baits range like crazy when it comes to price. So what I wanna do today is take a look at jigs specifically and how they stack up at different price points. On my left right here, I have a $2 jig, and on my right, I have a $10 jig. That means this bait is five times more expensive than this one. That is a huge price differential, guys. So what I wanna go ahead and do now is break open both of these baits, take a closer look at each one of them, and see where the price difference is, and then we're gonna put both of them to the test in actual conditions and do a little bit of fishing. So let's go ahead and break these baits open and start fishing. And here is a closer look at the jigs, guys. They are both black and blue, and they are both half ounce. But we're gonna go ahead and start with the expensive one. So let's go ahead and break this bad boy open. Came right out of there. First off, there are two weed guards right here. I've never seen that on a jig, so that's a pretty interesting feature right there. And another thing I've never really noticed on any jig before are these guys right here. These are kind of like, if you didn't have a trailer or anything, these almost work as a trailer. You got those little crawl, little pincher tentacle things going on right there. And the skirt itself is put on there really well. This thing is not going anywhere. It is not gonna get pulled down. It's not gonna get ripped off. It's definitely a very high grade skirt. And that goes along with the entire construction of this bait. There's also some rattles on this thing. And the hook is, is very sharp. I will confirm the hook is very sharp. This is a really good quality hook and it's a big, thick hook too. That means this thing is built for some heavy cover to really jack some fish out of there. And that is basically the rundown on this jig right here. But what I'm going to do is match all these jigs with the same trailer today. So they're all about the same profile as each other's, this one and the cheaper one. But this one has a little bit longer skirts and these appendages. So it's going to be a little bit bigger profile than the other bait. But all in all, they're pretty much the same thing. So let's go ahead and get that trailer on. We are all tied up. Let's go ahead and get this thing in the water and see See what kind of damage it can do. Ooh, that was not a very good cast. We're gonna have to get dialed in with my skiff in here. Always takes a second. <clears throat> Dang, missed one right there. Mm. Ooh, that was the first cast right there. That was the first cast. Literally the first cast on this new pole. And I threw that in there before it even hit the water. I didn't feel anything. That line just started moving to the left. Let's see if we'll bite it again. I set the hook and I didn't feel anything. Oh, there he is. What? What? Oh my gosh. There we go. First fish. Oh, we lost him. We lost him. That was a bad hook set. There's one guys, first one of the day. Oh, it's a pretty good one. It is a pretty good one. Yes, sir. Get on in here, bud. Get on in here. That's a solid like three and a half pounder. Up on the bank she goes. Let's go, <laughs> let's go. That is how you want him to eat it. Absolutely annihilated that thing. Finally got one on the hook right here. We've had a few missed hits and this one finally took it good and I finally got a good hook set on her. But we have two other bites back here in this corner right here behind me. And both of those fish, they hit it pretty good and I set the hook pretty hard. I think my drag was a little loose and that's why I missed them. But I tightened it up and finally this girl came up and munched it and stuck her good. Let's go ahead and get her back in. Off she goes. Let's take it right back out there. There we go, back to back cast. Oh, it came off. Dang, dang. One thing I'm noticing right away with this thing is you really gotta set the hook hard to get through this double weed guard right here. I have had quite a few bites on this thing already and just every time I'm really setting that hook hard and I'm just not getting pinned up well. Besides that one fish that I caught, just I guess I really, I really gotta put some oomph into it or use a stiffer rod to really set that hook. There we go, fish number two. Fish number two, not nearly as big as that first one, but 
got her good make sure i suck that hook really really hard it is so hard getting through that weed guard got her good right there inside the, the mouth let's go ahead and pop that sucker out of there bye bud there we go there we go got him got him that time oh stay down stay down stay down stay down that's a decent one that's a oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah that's a good one guys that's a good one that's a good one all day that one might be better than the first one come on up here let's go ahead and get a flip yes sir <laughs> look at that chunk got her that time i've had a few bites in that same exact spot and i really made sure she had it that time and set the hook hard and i pinned her right in the top of the mouth a gorgeous fish, probably solid three, three and a half pounder. Can't complain about a catch like that. Absolutely gorgeous fish. Let's go ahead and get her back in. Here she goes. Here we go, another fish, another fish. I've been making sure these fish had it really good before I set the hook after a few misses. And so, oh, she came off right here at the bank. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What I was saying is that I was really trying to let these fish take the bait really good before I set the hook. The first few fish that I missed, I was kind of setting the hook really fast. And these last few fish, I let them take it a little bit and then set the hook. And that is seeming to be working. Definitely setting the hook a lot harder too and making sure these fish get pinned. As you can probably tell now, I've caught quite a few fish back in this corner. And the reason for that is all the fish are stacking up in here right now. And that's because there is a ton of wind. Y'all might be able to hear right now, it kind of died down for a minute. It's actually blowing really, really hard back into this pocket. The whole stretch of this, all the wind is moving this direction, causing this fish to stack up in here. So I'm hoping there might be a few more in this area. We're gonna keep picking out a few of these little spots back here, see if there aren't some more fish tucked up super tight up underneath some of these trees. There's one, there's one. He was stuck way up next to that tree over there. <laughs> I made a few casts, not quite as close, and he had nothing to do with it, and I finally got one right up where it needed to be, and what do you know? There's the fish. Absolutely munched that thing the second it started falling down in the water column right there. That is exactly how you want him to eat it. Perfect hook set, top of the mouth, I'm trying to get that thing out of there. But one of the better ones today, for sure. Quality, quality bass, probably about, mm, high twos mid twos really nice filled out fish super healthy all the fish in here have seemed to be really really healthy i'm looking for that big bite i know there's some bigger ones in here so let's go ahead and get this one back in and see if we can't find them adios these fish are absolutely loaded in this corner there we go there we go, another one. I just gotta get it right on the edge of that tree line over there. And pretty much every time I hit it, just right there on the edge, I'm getting smoked the second this bait hits the water. These fish are stacking up on it. And another one, another fat one. This might be the best one today. We are catching a boatload of three pounders today. These things are just crazy stacked up in this corner right now. The second I got out here, I looked at the conditions. I saw all this wind blowing back in here and I was like, these fish are gonna be absolutely loaded in here. I started the video out in my boat and then the first catch was actually on the bank. That's because I went out last night, didn't really have much luck, came out today and I am finally on top of these fish. And this one is just pinned so good. Let me go grab my pliers. Ah, there we go. Finally got it out. Another really healthy fish. I mean, every single one of these is about the same, really close to three, mid threes. I know there's some really quality ones in there. I'm just going to keep going at it. I might put my boat in the water when I switch over to the smaller, cheaper jig. And that's just because there's a ton of trees right here and they're definitely relating to those way better than they are just the actual grass bank over here. So I'd like to be able to get in and fish that a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and put this sucker back in. See if we can't find a giant, guys. Hi, buddy.
There we go. <laughs> Another one. This one's coming right at me. Oh, come here, bud. Come here, bud. That's literally two casts later. <laughs> I'm just laughing at how loaded this corner is right now because of the wind. I have never seen it like this. Holy smokes, guys. We are on them. Later, bud. There we go. Fish on. Fish on. There we go. Oh, no, he dropped it. That felt like a really good one, too, guys. Oh, that felt like one of the best ones yet. Dang. Dang, dang, that sucks. One quick thing I really want to say that I've noticed about all these fish back here. Yes, they've been stacked up. Yes, I've caught a ton without really moving outside of a 20-yard area on this bank right here. But every single one of these fish just about has wanted it in a very precise spot, like right up on the edge of their cover, right where it needs to be. I've cast it a few times at all these places where I've caught these fish that weren't just quite up there where the bait needed to be. The first cast that actually got where it needed to be right up against the edge of the trees got absolutely smoked. And that is a huge difference maker when you're fishing, guys. Make it a super accurate cast, being able to get exactly where those fish are and where they're likely gonna be makes all the difference sometimes. And this is just a really good example of that today. All the casts that have caught these fish have been super, super precise and exactly where they need to be. Fish has it right now. There we go, there we go. My drag slipped right there. Oh, another fatty, another fatty. I got to tighten down my drag. I almost didn't get that fish. I was able to thumb the spool really hard to make up for <laughs> bad drag. And there we go, the best one of the day. Holy smokes, guys, that is a fat bass. Chomped. Like I said, guys, these fish just want it in a super precise spot right there. I skipped that thing all the way up under that tree and just kind of worked it out. And right when it got to the edge, this fish came up and grabbed it. I let her have it for a second, made sure she really had it in her mouth, and then set the hook. And as a reward, I think I got the best fish that I've had all day. Hold on, let me get this thing out of her mouth. There it is. An incredibly gorgeous, thick, fat bass. This one's probably close to four. This is definitely the best one of the day, I think. I don't know, it's hard to tell. There's been a lot of really fat, chunky, stocky bass caught this morning. Literally, I'm not even kidding, in a tiny little area, literally the size of like a home swimming pool. But we're gonna go ahead and get this sucker back in, and I believe it is time to go ahead and take this off and switch over to the cheaper jig and put the boat in the water and see what we can do with that. Let's go ahead and get this sucker back in and find us a giant. I've literally released like seven fish in the same spot today. <laughs> Bye, baby. I got the boat in the water, but I wanted to take one last look at the expensive jig before I start fishing with the cheaper one, just to kind of see what kind of damage I did to this thing after using it a little bit and catching quite a few fish on it to kind of see how it held up. And at first glance, this thing looks like it held up really, really well. And for $10, the quality of this bait is gonna last you quite some time. The only really problem you're gonna have with this thing, as far as actually this thing getting beat up is if you lose it i think you would have to catch a just a stupid amount of fish on this thing before actually tearing it up so much that you needed a, a new jig just from getting beat up outside of just losing it all on its own but everything looks great the skirt is on here perfectly fine the appendages that are on here are on here great the only thing that's actually beat up just a little bit is the actual hook keeper itself which i actually prefer i like this to be a little bit softer it makes it a little bit easier to hook these fish and as you could tell the first few fish in this video i was struggling to get them hooked and then I switched over to a harder hook set and letting them take it a little bit longer. And along with that, this thing did get softer and, and a little bit easier to get the hook through it. So all in all, this thing is really great for what you pay for it. I think as long as you make sure you use the right line and make sure you have good knots and are retying it once it gets frayed, this thing is gonna last you quite some time. So now to the budget option, we have the Strike King Bitsy Jig, I think that's what it's called. This is also a half ounce black and blue jig, like I said before. It's a little bit smaller profile, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that trailer on this thing and beef it up a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. But before I do that, I kinda wanna go over this at first glance, what I think of this bait for $2. And for $2, this is a really good quality little jig right here. The skirt, obviously not as high quality as the $10 one. These things can kind of pull in and out and 
the skirt keeper itself is just like a rubber band and this thing is going to get beat up over time just from catching fish so eventually at some point you're either going to have to replace the skirt or just replace the jig all on its own the hook uh it's definitely it's it's a good quality hook it's not, it's definitely not bad by any means and we just got one little skirt keeper no rattles no extra appendages no nothing like that but for two dollars this is a great little jig and is a great budget option so let's go ahead and get that skirt on so before I could even make a cast with this thing, I actually caught a fish while my GoPro was off. It was just dangling in the water while I was trying to figure out a way to mount my camera back here because I forgot my camera mount. And it was just sitting in the water and all of a sudden I pick up my line to make it my first cast and there's a three pounder on the end of my line. What? <laughs> what? So it just goes to show you the budget bait definitely does work. I don't even have to try to catch a fish with it to catch one. So I'm excited to get started with this thing. That is, that is something else. You do not see that happen every day. There we go. First one of the day. Oh no, it came off. Ah, dang, it wasn't a very big one. I guess it technically wasn't the first one considering I caught one without even trying off the GoPro, but first one on camera. Come on now, see if we can't get another one this cast. There we go, there we go. There's the first fish on the jig that I got in the boat on camera. Smoked that thing, not, a, not as big as some of the other ones we've been catching earlier today, but a quality bass. This guy is not giving me a chance to grab him. There we go, he's a squirmer. Nothing too crazy, so I'm just going to go ahead and chuck her back in. Thanks for buying, bud. There we go. I actually saw that fish come up and eat it. I was pulling it through that grass. Oh, no, he spit it. But I actually saw that fish eat that thing clear as day. It was just this little small one. He came up right out of that stuff that came up and munched it. I was pulling it through that last little bit of just kind of like cut grass that's flowing there on the surface. And he just grabbed the second I pulled it out of it. There we go. Got another one. Got another one. Same spot. A little dinker. Super dinker. Get on in here, sucker. Munched it though. Just a baby. Later, bud. Another one. That's three cats in a row. They are stacked on these trees, guys. Oh my gosh. Crush that thing all the way down the back of his throat exactly how you want him eating it this guy's bleeding just a tad bit so i'm just gonna go ahead and put him back in instead of showing him to y'all on the big camera thank you for biting bud go get yourself a good meal low tide, low high tide baby. there's one there's another one. Oh, that's a nice one right there guys that is a quality bass come on into the boat my bud my dude get on in here solid little two and a half pounder on to the next my bud you see him come after it let it drop stop it and let it go to the bottom he'll pick it up there's one there's one up out of that tree they've gotten smaller as the day has gone on munch that thing good though Woo! he's a squiggly little guy on to the next that that four times that much there's one there's one back in that corner good bass oh yeah jumping for us get on in the boat my dude my dad joined me and we just doubled up got a little double jig double fish action there's another one same spot oh it's a ultra dink a mega twinkie what's up little dude calm down for me jimmy Later, bud. There's one, <laughs> three casts in a row. This corner's loaded, guys. We went up there to fish the other side of the pond, and we've worked our way back to this corner. And the, as I told you all, the wind's blowing back here, and they're just loaded and stacked back here. That's three casts in a row. Off she goes. There we go, right up in that corner. It's a nice, feels like a decent one. Oh. Not that big, just a, another small one. Another day, another Jimmy. Oh, there we go, got him, he's pinned, he's pinned. I watched that fish come up and eat that thing outside of, oh, that's a really good one, guys. That is a really good one. Oh yeah. Three and a half. 
That's a solid fish, guys. That guy, oh, he spit it! No! That's a social distance quick release. Here, watch out. I mean, there might be another one in there. I threw it. There was a bunch of fry swimming around back there. I got there's another one. I got him. I, got, I told you. <laughs> He's been on the tree. I'm gonna have to go get this one out. <laughs> Keep him pinned. Oh yeah. Come here, fatty. Come here, fatty. Two right up in that tree. Try to get this one in the boat. There we go. Munched it. Two fish came right from that same spot in that tree. Even after I just ripped that one bass out of there, I threw it back in there, literally my next cast, directly in that same spot. After all the commotion from the first one, this came up and crushed it. And on that note, let's go ahead and wrap up today's video. But I wanted to give you all my two final thoughts on these bait as far as price is concerned. I think both of them are definitely priced fairly by all means. I would just say the more premium bait is built to last longer. So if you find yourself constantly wearing out baits before you actually lose it to a tree or a fish or a stick or whatever it might be, consider spending a little bit more for a higher quality bait that might last you a little bit longer so you're not having to replace that bait. So that's just my two cents far as price and baits are concerned. But hopefully y'all enjoyed today's video. And if you did, drop a like and subscribe. And as always, Bassin is a passion. Peace.